But I just say that from a place of wanting to educate the people. Like, oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, again, yeah. had her friends or the people that was laughing at her accent or had she not had to feel I had to hide who I am because I don't want them to see me as Ethiopian. Yeah, had yeah. they know the history, they wouldn't look at her different. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't want to clown her. They wouldn't want to tease her. They would mm -hmm. actually want to still be her friend or actually get to know more about something they did, don't get to know about on a regular basis. What's good, y'all? It's the Dumashats React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today we're back with another American Reaction. Super excited about this video. If you're new to us and, and we're new to you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 200K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family without further ado. Let's get into the video. Let's get it. I feel like the Ethiopian culture, I guess, has kind of influenced your upbringing. Let's start with that. Like, being Ethiopian Orthodox Christian, especially, like, my upbringing was, like, kind of conservative, in mm -hmm. a sense. That was, like, hard for me sometimes, just because I feel like I'm not really a conservative person. So, it would just kind of clash, you know? Like, I would be, like, hanging out with, like, my American friends or whatever. And, like, the things they were able to do were different than, like, what my parents really wanted me to do. Like, I couldn't go to sleepovers and stuff growing up, which kind of sucks just because I would feel excluded. My parents were kind of strict, so, like, they wouldn't let me go as many places. And then I felt like my, like, American friends or whatever would be hanging out all the time. Like, there's, like, that, like, American side of me trying to, like, See, fit in. That, my question would be how long. Have she been here before? You know what I'm saying? For that experience. Because, yeah, of course that could be difficult. Like, your parents want you to be up to mm -hmm. raise you this way. But then when you go into the world, that's not that out there for you. Or there's probably little to any at all. You know what I'm saying? So right. she's trying to juggle the two cultures there. Right. And it trying sounds, to fit in at the same time. It sounds like she may have been a person who either was born here or brought here very, very young. Yeah. Because it sounds like, you know, a child just trying to find their place in the world. In, Basically. In, in the United States, you know? Um, but being a parent, us being a parent, with children who have friends from multicultural backgrounds, I see how their parents hone in on their culture in their homes. Mm -hmm. Especially, like, during the summer. They don't have an opportunity. Well, I'm just speaking from, you know, our children's friends. They don't have an opportunity to, let's say, go, go on, like, a camping trip with us or their other American friends in the summer. Yeah, because they go back home right. to their home countries. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just a way, just speaking as a parent, if we were, let's say if we moved somewhere else and our child had to, our children had to struggle with finding their way in that society, in our household is going to be straight. African American culture in our household, and we may, you know, okay, we're gonna go take a trip back to the United States during the summertime so that you still can be a person who knows where your family comes from and know the customs. And you know, I, I was gonna say the law of the land, but the customs of your family. So, mm -hmm. I, 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 I get it from a parent point of view, and you know, from her kind of point of view, I kind of understand where she's coming from. Mm -hmm like that culture but also like the ethiopian part of me wanting to hold on to my ethiopian culture and not like lose that part of myself in this world or whatever yeah, so yeah, yeah. kind of same here the only difference i would say is there was a point where because i also lived in tanzania so when i came here i was just like i don't want to be seen as like the african girl or whatever because like i was ethiopian and lived in tanzania i definitely market myself as more American than anything else. And then when yeah. people come up to me, get to know me, they're like, oh, you're Ethiopian, or, or they'll just like notice it. I think that's interesting though. Like, do you think you had like more of an accent before? So I was so like adamant on not having an accent actually that like I refused. This sounds so stupid now looking back, but basically refused to like learn Swahili, which is the Tanzanian. Why? Yeah, because I didn't want to have an accent and you'd get so made fun of. So I was just like, I don't want to like. By ignorant you know? people though. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, that's true. I feel like now people are really starting to like glorify accents. Mm -hmm. You know, like they're like, oh, like that's like really interesting, or like, oh, like that's like hot or something. Yeah. You know, fetishizing it. We almost. speak in, yeah, we speak in English accents all the <laughs> time. You know, <laughs> sometimes I feel like I wish I didn't like suppress the differences in the way I said things as much growing up, just because I feel like it's okay to speak differently, and I think that it kind of adds character because it, it shows where you're from. You know, I don't know if people have ever said this to you, but people have been like, you talk like. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, girl. I'm the Oreo of my high school. No, that's yeah. What, that's what I You know what I mean? It's hard whenever you're, like, caught between these two different cultures and, like, you're trying so hard to fit in, so, like, you don't want to, like, mispronounce things and, and you're trying to speak a certain way in front of Ethiopian people. We seem like oh, we're, like, better or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know? True, true, true. That's why you Like, what's like, at that restaurant? He was exactly. like, you're out of Sometimes, also, I feel like there's just, like, this weird in-between because, like, we're black. Like, our skin tone is black, uh -huh. but we're also not categorized as African-American. But, we are but even African-American isn't even, like, an accurate depiction, depiction of yeah, black. Yeah. Because Sometimes, I feel like that makes it up. hard for uh -oh. us to fit in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I hear Ida Wales. I hear Sojourn the Truth. Okay. Okay, they seem younger, mm. so I'm not going to yeah. hone in too much, but... Politicians, this is why black history is needed in schools, okay? Because we African Americans seem to be overlooked when it comes to other black people in America. And our history is within the foundation of the United States. And it's very important that people understand who we are so that things like that isn't said because it's said in just a lack of knowing. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. African American history. History, facts, yeah. I feel like, yeah. again, people misconstrue race with ethnicity. Unfortunately, the United States is a place where we're all categorized. We're categorized from the moment we open our eyes for the first day of life to the last day with our death certificate. Mm. Okay, so that's just unfortunate with us. And I know that may seem like a foreign concept to everybody else. But unfortunately, we're not just American. But... We have to respect, just like we have to respect other people's culture who's coming into right. the salad bowl. Right, right. Black <laughs> Americans, African Americans, have to be respected for our culture as well. True. Um, our people who came before us fought for us to be recognized in our society. Okay? Um, we have to been have called citizenship. Many, to have citizenship. Yeah. When the Constitution was created, we were here. Mm. Okay, so unfortunately, it wasn't added into it until like eighteen sixty something though. So. You know, exactly. in some parts of it, yeah. Exactly, our people fought for us to be recognized. I I'm trying to say the word; it's on the tip of my tongue. But they fought for us to be recognized citizens. That's that's what we call ourselves. Okay, so I feel like they when they hear African, it makes them think. Are you African? It makes them think of that. But no, when you would ask. Um, uh, African in America, what they are, they'll say Nigerian American, um, Ghanaian American. They'll say that. They, yeah, yeah. I feel like those people, they understand it. But to s just say that African American isn't an accurate term, that's mm. like a slap in the face to all of what our people have gone through. Yeah, and that's just a pause there just to take that in because, yeah, that's really what it yeah, is. Yeah, and but when I, I say, I'm sorry, babe, but I just say that from a place of wanting to educate the people. Like, oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, again, yeah. had her friends or the people that was laughing at her accent or had she not had to feel I had to hide who I am because I don't want them to see me as Ethiopian, yeah, had yeah. they know the history, they wouldn't look at her different. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't want to clown her. They wouldn't want to tease her. They would mm -hmm. actually want to still be her friend or actually get to know more about something they did, don't get to know about on a regular basis. So it's, right. it's a big connection that is not being plugged in mm -hmm. when it comes to that knowing because of how history is and how the stuff is not taught in certain school, in school yeah. period. Actually. And that's why it needs to be taught at home first because we can't depend on the schools anymore. Obviously, they want to get it out the schools. Mm-hmm. How you gonna tell? How you gonna teach a history class with excluding the very? I'm gonna back off. Y'all know I'm very passionate about my people and about this topic, so I'm gonna just back off. But also, I feel like we've like kind of flipped that and made it to where we can interact with people of all different cultures, which is a good thing because we didn't like segregate ourselves in a sense. But I just feel like I never, I never like fully fit in with like the black kids. Clearly, never fully fit in with the white kids. And, and I never really fit in with the Ethiopian kids either just because I was like trying to fit in with the other groups too. Yeah. So it was just this weird like, where do I go in this? And how do you think church has helped with that? I used to go to Mariam and that was really good for me because I was able to like see a lot of other- Like churches 
overall have that initiation to say, I want to love on you when you come here. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have that opening arm to you whenever you yeah. walk into the church home. So I feel like with them saying that they're trying to fit in, church is going to be an easy fit in spot. Like, Let's see. Because uh, I remember I met an Ethiopian when we first moved to Dallas. And we were, you know, we had grew a bond. And I was like, oh, which, which church do you go to? I didn't know nothing about Ethiopian culture I, I knew about the bible and but i my my knowledge of ethiopia was very limited i was like oh what church do you go to and she was like um i go through an orthodox church and i'm like oh what's that uh what time y'all go to church on sunday i'm gonna come <laughs> <laughs> she was like okay <laughs> but i never did go to the church because because of her reaction to that and i'm like mm. but at the same time it's different you know what i'm saying with the church homes that they need or they want to be in so when they set foot in there, they're going to get that receiving hand. They're going to receive, mm. get them hugs. They're going to be loved on correctly. So I feel like that's a good spot for them to be in. They want to actually try to fit in. Yeah, that's their that's their culture bearers. Well, that's our each church is a culture bearer. You know, just like our Baptist. We already know the Baptist church oh, with the yeah. ring shout and mm -hmm. the old mm -hmm. hymns and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. That is that's the cornerstone of African American culture. Yeah. yeah. So um, I feel like they're and I like that. In in the United States, first of all, we we are all mixed in. We are land of immigrants. Okay, um, I love that they have these churches that's specifically for their culture. Other people may look at it like it's segregation or whatever, but it's for their culture. Yeah, it's I for mean, their culture. that's how it is where they're from. So right, and it's just for them to have a sense of community and, and home and obviously church. I know? mean, it's just like the Fellowship. restaurants. Yeah, you're gonna have restaurants where you can find your. You're a type of food. You don't want no McDonald's. You don't want no other stuff. You want mm -hmm. what you're used to. Yeah. So that's what Look you're what they're eating. Ethiopian food. Yeah. <laughs> In the United States. Had it been us, it would have been crawfish on the table. Yes. Yeah, Y'all seen, <laughs> seen it before. Y'all seen it before. Kids hang out with them, but at the same time, how do you even navigate relationships within that community? Yeah. Because it's different. I wish I went to church more growing up, you know, and I wish I valued it more just because I see the value more now. I think that then it was like, What's going on here? Like, this is not what church looks like on TV. I don't understand everything that's happening all the time. Mm -hmm. And so that made it hard, too, just because, like, when I couldn't understand what they were saying in, like, is I would just kind of feel like I'm sitting here, but I'm not fully, like, consuming it the way that I want to, you know? And not to say that I didn't ever understand everything, because I do love to go to church. Church isn't about being social, but, but it I is, like, a gap. Yeah, low-key, like, Ethiopians be, like, out here in mm -hmm. church. Like, there's always see a everybody. service after, too. Yeah. yeah, for, like, tea, shy, and bread, mm -hmm. you know? So. But I feel like that's what would make me anxious. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'd be fine during the sermon part, but then once it came to, like, the socializing part, it would make me kind of nervous sometimes, just because I felt like I didn't fully fit in, like, mm -hmm. I couldn't understand everything, whatever. Growing up. Ethiopian in America, like, definitely one of the things that I value the most is the fact that I have family displays mm -hmm. all over the place. So it's like, there's someone to visit, like, everywhere, everywhere you go. Lowest of keys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's Whether like, it's like an aunt, uncle, cousin, or even a family friend. Yeah. I feel like family friends you refer to as your like family. cousins or like, yeah. yeah like, Do you call, like, most of your out of friends cousins? <clears throat> yeah, literally, like, hi, sis. Hi, hi sister. Anytime you see an Abisha person, sorry, I say Abisha sometimes when people are like, ah, Abisha. Really? People correct you on that? Yeah. Do people not correct you? Lois of Keys, uh, this one guy commented on the last video we did, which is the Skista video thing, and he said something about how I use the word Abisha, and it was like two paragraphs, so I didn't read all of it, but I was like, you really just came for me, and I don't know where I went wrong. Yeah. yeah. So maybe I've been pronouncing it wrong, but I thought it was just Abisha. I did too, bro, but I think it's like Habisha. Mm, mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, now we look like Farah and Josh. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of weird. We're caught in between like literally two worlds. Like two worlds mm -hmm. collide. That's, That's the thing that people have to understand. It's like you're trying to like grow up learning like two different cultures and like yeah. when you're with Ethiopian people, you want to fit in with them. When you're with American people, you want to fit in with them. And I feel like now that we're like adults, mm -hmm. it's like we're finding that perfect medium. Not perfect, huh? But we're finding that medium. I feel like as kids, it was kind of like a... It could be confusing, you know? It can be really hard to navigate. Yeah. All I know is I do wish that I was more invested in the Ethiopian culture growing up. I didn't try to delve into the culture as much because 
It's kind of like what you were saying before. You want to be American late. so bad. Yeah. In America, especially previously, being American is glorified. Being able to speak a certain way is glorified. And when you're different, sometimes it's looked down upon. And so sometimes that can give you this like internalizing, like, oh, like not really delving deep into your culture. Yeah. Um, and I don't want someone to come and be like, oh, you hate being have a shot, whatever, because yeah, I love being true. Ethiopian. Like, we, we wouldn't have connected on the level that we did. If, yeah, honestly. If I, we I were, agree. Because we can just relate on so many things, like, mm -hmm. culturally. Everything is a cause of reaction. So I just feel like when you understand, like, the cause to the reaction, it makes sense because everyone comes from different places. So yeah. The way they react to different things is different. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you don't understand where why they're reacting, you don't understand why they're reacting. Mm -hmm. they react. and that's also why I wanted to sit down and talk about this because I feel like it's interesting to, like, grow up in a different country than... I guess your origin, you know what I mean? And like having to kind of like make yourself assimilate. Yeah, there we go. Like literally assimilate to the culture. I feel like in Ethiopian culture, you give your guests and the people you love like everything and more, even if you don't have that to give. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that's just really nice. Because there's more of a sense of community there. I think the society is more community oriented versus like a very individualistic approach that there is like here. Mm -hmm. Everyone just likes to share. If I had $10, and my cousin was like, I need 11. I'd like try to find another dollar mm -hmm. and give you know her 11. Mm -hmm. It's just like, that's the kind of like mentality I feel like a lot of Ethiopians have. And I feel like people have probably noticed that about us. Mm -hmm. Like we do share a lot, but also that leaves room for being taken advantage of, especially when you're in a society where that's not the norm. Yeah. People see that and like are like, oh, let me, like, let me take advantage of that. There's been situations where, you know, like, I feel like I've gotten taken advantage of and like, I'm sure you can say the same mm -hmm. thing. Stop taking advantage of people, y'all. People be doing kind gestures because they mean it. That's how their right. lifestyles are set up. And then you break that. You know what I'm saying? You break that whole system yeah. that they got flowing, and then they really get in the shell and they stop doing that for people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the bad apples, though. Bad you apples can't. really would spoil the whole... It would, but you can't, like, really place that on, like, America. No, I didn't. That's, that's bad. No, I'm not talking about you. I'm oh. just saying, in general. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I want to talk about... It's interesting hearing them and us having children who have friends who are from different countries. That is interesting. And now it just makes me reflect and think of things differently because when we're in the presence of their friends and our children are 10 and under. So when we're in the presence of, of their friends, you know, they're, they're at an innocent age. So they're asking questions. They're asking, why is this differently? And then I'll, I'll see their parents you know, try to correct them and make sure that they're still still behaving in the way that their culture would behave. Mm. And I, I get it now. I get it. I, I could not imagine what it is like being a child from another country coming into any other country and yeah. trying to find who you are. And fit in. And fit in. And, and then not understand the importance of protecting your culture. Yeah. Because in, in I was going to say Louisiana, but in the United States, you know, we are a salad bowl. Everybody is not the same. Um, being a individual is written in the Constitution, and it was basically um, the result of what the colonists didn't want from England you know so it's like it's ingrained in us to appreciate who we are but we have to be sensitive to other cultures so that we can appreciate other cultures because once you relate to not really relate but once you get to a level of wanting to learn and wanting to understand people mm -hmm. they will have that in return because I see a lot of times um, immigrants when they come here they're they're standoffish a lot yeah and and I also see the other I see the bad side of America of Americans and how they treat immigrants and and I'm talking about the people who have done the work not the not the not the crisis that we have in the people who has done the work to become citizens here yeah that's why I think people need to just appreciate both sides yes. of the culture like I yes. feel yeah it's highly I feel like Americans have this Oh, like they already got this image that I feel like a lot of people have of them when they get here. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. People are standoffish, or they don't want to get too deep into it because they kind of got this idea of who we are mm -hmm. or how we operate. But I feel like that's the part where you have to try to get to have an understanding of how their culture is operating as well. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, just like you was mentioning, this is, it's about, it's a two-side coin. You know, yeah. you want to get to have an understanding for both sides. Yeah, and you know, another thing is, you know, when, they, when they're when they showing them the pictures of the type of people to stay away oh, from yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. things like that, I feel like that does a disservice to to new newly made citizens and citizens who were born here to to integrate with each other. I feel like that does a disservice because they're already painting a bad image of certain groups based on their ideas. Yeah, and people don't really think to not mm-hmm. look at it as to question it. Like we used to always say to you guys like make sure you guys like question half of the stuff or most of the stuff that you guys see because Mm -hmm. a lot of times it's not what it is right that's another side to everything you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying so like yeah yeah because we're not taught anything about 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 like think about schools in schools we're not taught anything about immigrants we're only taught about our history and and other subjects we're not taught anything about But they paint the picture on the media for us yeah I mean, that's how it is around the world for every every group. They yeah. paint a certain image for every group, and people are liking to what they feel is suitable mm-hmm. or what they glorify. Yeah. So. so then you'll have the bad apples that I was talking about, the bad sides of America. You'll have the bad apples coming in contact with these people in public, and they're spewing hate at them. Yeah. It's got to be nice. You know what? I was supposed to be a lawmaker, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I wouldn't last. Could y'all see me last? They would, what, what, they, what they call it? They would tell me my time is up. Because mm. I would have too much to say. But for different reasons, it's just once people see that, like, you're nice, honestly, and that you're just willing to kind of just do a lot of things with them. For people that you care about, yeah. Yeah, like, once you just show them that you care, they'll start to take, you know? Or, like, what is it once you start to give people love to take? Uh Uh-huh. says. Literally. But they do. Like, people do like to take, and they don't really like to give as much of themselves. And so that can be an imbalance in, like, our life a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like the culture is just like, share, share, no matter what, no matter how much you're hurt, keep sharing. And, like... We've even had to come be to like, yo. Yeah, we've even had to be like, you know, telling each other like, hey, like, yeah. I know you're just like being be a nice. good friend. Yeah. And that's crazy. The fact that we have to be like, yo, like, <laughs> stop being so nice, dude. <laughs> I mean, that's, I think, such a positive thing about our culture. Like, and yeah. I think I think people notice that, you know, like I've had people tell me like, oh, like, Ethiopian people are so nice. I mean, obviously with everything, there's like negative stereotypes. Like, let's go through this one more time, Mr. and Mrs. Click Click Dirk. I think those are some positive stereotypes that are like really meaningful. Yeah, I agree. It's a really good trait to have, just make sure that people don't see it too soon. Yeah. What about in the sense of music? Because like for me, I know I don't listen to a lot of Ethiopian music, which makes me sad now because we did the Learn to that with this video. Yeah. And we listened to a lot of Ethiopian music and stuff, and that was really, really fun, but I don't typically listen to Ethiopian music. And I know Miriam, who filmed the video mm-hmm. with us, loves Ethiopian she music. She has already to that bro. Yeah, and I need to get that, first mm-hmm. of all. But I just never really like delve into it other than um my uncle because he is uh no it's a gay so i listen to a lot of his music <laughs> <laughs> my uncle's dowdy <laughs> But I know a lot of like older people listen to his music in Ethiopia and You gotta know Teddy Afro. Though. Okay, true, true. I know like, Teddy you know, Afro. Bye, yeah, hush, love, love, you know. <laughs> we know the basics. We know. But mm-hmm. I feel like I'm kind of on a similar similar page. Like I know some Muslims, you know, from church and then also just like popular songs that like my family would play. Mm-hmm. Um a lot of the time, you know, if my mom was like in the kitchen doing things or whatever, there's this one song. Please comment down below if you know what this song is called because I used to bop to this. <laughs> but it was like the Cupid Shuffle at a Madding Ever. I'll be like, and what a piece. And what a girl. And then it should, it should. Something, something, I don't even know, but that was my damn, bro. How do you feel like religion has affected your views on a lot of different topics? Like we already discussed kind of before, like it's super conservative. For me, I feel like my mom is as liberal as it gets when it comes to an Ethiopian parent, to be honest, because she worked for the UN, so she was very, very liberal when it comes mm-hmm. to just everything, like sexuality and all that kind of fun stuff. Ethiopians are typically very, very, very Yeah, that could be very damaging, you know? Mm-hmm. Especially, and like, I hate to say that, as the first thing I say, Mm -hmm. but it's like when you grow up in a very like liberal society and then you have these like very, very conservative views with your religion, it's like conflicting. Ethiopia is hella homophobic, bro. Mm -hmm. Like that sucks, you know? And I mean, I mean, (laughs) I mean, (laughs) I think 
growing up, it was just hard seeing the way Habashat adults would react to like seeing things relating to the LGBTQ community. Like that would be like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like it would be scary almost. It's like, why are they reacting like that? But also you can understand why people react a certain way once oh, yeah. you know where they come from. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you can kind of get it just because of like their lifestyle. Their lifestyle, growing up in Ethiopia maybe and like, you know, how society is there. If I have felt really like, pushed down, I guess, by like how conservative it is here. I can't imagine what that would be like if I was actually growing up in Ethiopia. So it's tough, but I feel like hopefully as time progresses, the Ethiopian community will become more accepting. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is that right now it's not. Yeah. And that's probably like the tragic flaw that's what of being Ethiopian. Say. The me. only thing. Can you explain what tragic flaw is? Because the tragic flaw is just kind of like the one imperfect thing and like everything that you thought was perfect. You're just like, oh my God, this is perfect. Like, Mm -hmm. I love this one thing and then there's like a chip and you're like how is how is mm -hmm. your chip on And I think that homophobia is like one of those chips mm -hmm. and also a little bit of sexism too Definitely Just to finish off this video I just kind of want to ask you what's your favorite thing about being Ethiopian? I think my favorite part about being Ethiopian I kind of talked about before but it really is the sense of community and just the family values Growing up I would be like why can't I go to sleepovers? Why can't I go do this do that? But it took me going to college to like understand that it was just because they didn't want me to go somewhere and something bad to happen. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. We had a really good right, you guys, make sure you go show that pay some love, show them some love, show them some love. I think that's just what it is. Parenting is just like, parenting is just making sure your child is in the right place at the right time so they don't right. have to go into deal with anything too early, if I can say. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because experiences, life is going to happen anyway. But yeah. experiences can be avoided if you have the right tools to not go into certain places. Yeah, but I mean, as children, children thinks everything is all peaches and roses. Mm. You know, I remember when we um, we made a video. It was a short video about um, sleepovers, about how we don't let oh, our yeah, children yeah. go to sleepovers, and our children was in the video. Y'all need to go check that out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, our children was, you know, in a video about they can't go to sleepovers, but people can come sleep to our house. And some people came underneath the comment section. A lot of people said they agreed with it but no, some people that. was like i love that my parents let me go to sleep and that is that's what it is though yeah. this is you and your parents baby you ain't gonna change nothing that happens in my house mm. nothing all right so yeah this was a cool video very interesting very different yeah ethiopian in america very different um but very much needed conversation thank you guys for sending this video in we hope you guys enjoyed it make sure you subscribe we'll see you soon peace, peace.